All right, ready. Today we are going to be looking at the parable of the dragnet. So we've been looking at the kingdom of God, studying the kingdom of God, trying to understand what it means from, from Jesus' perspective. What was he teaching? He taught his primary message, he said, was the kingdom of God. So we want to look at what, how did Jesus explain it? What we've seen so far is that the kingdom of God actually means the reign of God. So the reign of God, the rule of God. And Jesus taught a different kingdom than the Jews were expecting. So the Jews were expecting someone, a Messiah to come that was going to take over from the Romans and they were going to uprise with the sword. As an earthly ruler. As an earthly ruler, right. And they were going to uprise and then the Jews were going to then rule the world. So the Romans were going to be under all the Gentile nations. So they were going to be ruling with God over the whole world. And what we saw is that that is actually the gospel of the kingdom of God. So that was God's plan at the beginning. He created Adam and Eve and to have dominion over the whole earth. So his plan was to rule through Adam and Eve. And that's the same plan that we see in Revelation. Jesus is going to rule with the saints. So the gospel of the kingdom of God is the same from Genesis to Revelation. And it is actually the same as what the Jews were expecting but Jesus didn't come to fulfill that at that time. Jesus came to start the kingdom of God, to fulfill part of it, which is giving us eternal life so we can be there with him in salvation. But he didn't come to implement the kingdom right away, which is what they were expecting. So we've been looking at the parables of Jesus, looking at uh, Jesus is explaining the kingdom of God through parables. A parable is a succinct story that illustrates one or more instructive lessons or principles. So parable is a type of analogy. It has a surface story and it has a deeper meaning. And it helps to, so the story, simple story that helps explain a more complex story. It's a physical or earthly story that helps explain a spiritual story. We saw that Jesus taught in parables for two reasons. First was to illustrate the point, but two, because he didn't want other people other than disciples to understand the parables. So it was also to hide the meaning of, of what he was saying. We've looked at Matthew 13 has eight parables. We've looked at six of them. So we've studied the parable of the sower, the parable of the wheat and the weeds, parable of the leaven, parable of the mustard seed, parable of the hidden treasure, and the parable of the pearl. We discovered that the first four parables of Matthew were warning us against opposition to the kingdom. So the parable of the sower and the soils, Jesus talked about four types of soils that seed was thrown upon. One of them was the path, the other was the rocky soil, thorns, and good soil. And then he said that this parable was the key to understanding all other parables. And so I'll read the explanation that he gave to the parable of the sower. It says, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom soon was sown on the rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word. And the worry of the world and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom the seed was sown in good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some <coughs> brought foos, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So the main points we got out of that parable are whether or not people accept the message of the kingdom is based on the condition of your heart. Number two is that the kingdom can be obtained but then lost. Number three is that the word of the kingdom can be planted in someone's heart and they still miss the kingdom in the end. Number four, the impact, the things that impact whether someone enters the kingdom include Satan, 
chasing worldly success, cares of the world, and whether they understand the message of the kingdom. And so we also looked at the parable of the wheat and the weeds. We saw that some people will appear to be children of God, but are not. They're actually supporting the enemy, and they will be removed at the end of the age. In the parable 11, we saw that there will be opposition from within the kingdom. Wrong teaching and false doctrine will get mixed throughout the kingdom. In the parable of the mustard seed, we saw that the kingdom will start small, so it won't be a big takeover like they expected. Everyone won't ex accept it at the beginning, but it will eventually grow large and fast. But there will be external influence and opposition to the kingdom, because he says birds will come and nest in it. In the parable of the hidden treasure, we saw that some will find the kingdom unexpectedly. They'll discover that the kingdom is more valuable than their worldly possessions, and they'll give up all they have for the kingdom. In the parable of the pearl was similar. Some people will be searching for the kingdom, and when they find it, they'll give up all their worldly possessions and goals to enter the kingdom. So those are the parables of Matthew 13 so far, and today we'll do the parable of the dragnet. Right, any, any thoughts? So far on the review? Mm. Mm. Okay. So today we do the parable of the dragnet. You have uh, Matthew 13, 47 to 50? Yes. Okay. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers but the bad they threw away so it will be at the end of the age the angels will come forth and take out the wicked from the from among the righteous and will throw them into the furnace of fire in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so that one sounds similar to the parable of the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's another parable. Jesus is warning about a future judgment. So this is the first parable about fishing, which is interesting because the disciples, a lot of them were fishermen. But he's given the parables about mm -hmm. cooking, about agriculture. So he's finally given them one about fishing, which they are. So this is about a dragnet to spread out into the sea. So there are three ways you can fish. You can fish with a pole. When you fish with a pole, you pretty much are trying to catch a certain type of fish, usually. It's like you're fishing for trout, you're fishing for bass. There's a cast net, which you throw out as a net that have weights on it. This is what the disciples use. And you throw it in the ocean, and it goes down into the ocean, and then you pull it back up. And then there's a drag net. A drag net is a large net. It has floats on the top and weights at the bottom and it's pulled by a boat. So one way you can have two different, so this is a professional, professional uh, type of fishing. So you can have two boats on either side and you drag it through the ocean. And so you just capture everything in the path in the net. And another way is you can have one boat tie it to the shore and just do kind of a circle and you capture everything. So kind of like Bubba Gump shrimp boat. <laughs> you can't, you can't <laughs> so, so it's uh, so it's you know you're gonna catch all kind of stuff. You're gonna get all kind of fish, and you're not gonna it's not gonna discriminate any type of fish. But you're also gonna get, you know, you're gonna get boots and cans and sandals and everything you're gonna get. Mm. So this is uh, so the. The details of the parable. So the parable we have the sea, the net, we have many kinds of fish, and we have the sorting. So we'll go through uh, each of those. The sea, the net, the fish, and the sorting. Alright, so let's see. So talking about the sea, so first we'll read the parable since it's similar to that parable of the wheat and weeds, we'll read the explanation to the parable of the wheat and weeds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the parable of the weeds explained. And this is the NIV version. 
Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us a parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for people in the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one and the enemy, who sow, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. <clears throat> As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm, so it's a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth going on. <coughs> So, uh, what exactly? I mean, I've heard uh, what exactly is gnashing of teeth? <laughs> you hear it all the time, yeah, yeah. but I've never actually seen a practical yeah. example. Mm -hmm. So, that's uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the so weeping, so I like, got that part. So, weeping is uh, <laughs> crying, is so that could be the loved ones of the people crying. So, so it's going to be an emotional pain. So, gnashing of teeth is grinding your teeth. So it hurts so bad that you're grinding your teeth. So it's going to be emotional yes. pain and physical pain. Okay. So national, it hurts so bad that you're grinding your teeth. Yeah, I guess. I just, it's just something you, I've heard all my life, but I've yeah. never s used it in practical language. Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't know until studying this. Actually, I just, <laughs> I have that. I, I guess the I term have, gnashing is what I'm... Yeah, I, did, I don't understand. I, I didn't either. I looked that up. I had it. I have it in the. I had it in the lesson later. Yeah. But yeah, so, so it's grinding of teeth. Grinding your teeth. So I actually learned that studying this as well. Yeah. Hmm. So. Is that helpful? <laughs> so just I, so, I learned so, something. So you got hurt. It's gonna be so yeah. it's something you do when you hurt when you're hurting. I know that's not. I don't want to gnash my teeth for eternity. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. Or weep either. You're going to run out and you're going to be gnashing <laughs> your gums no, after no, about no, you be dashing your gums after about right. a year. Yeah, yeah, no right, yeah. No, thank you. I know what I don't want to do for eternity. Uh, yeah. Me either. <laughs> so he's, so it's, uh, oh, so uh, a New Testament scholar, R.T. France, he says, uh, this reference, he's talking about the dragnet, it says, as in the weeds, it's not primarily to a mixed church, but to the division of mankind in general, which the last judgment will bring to light. So we, as we talked about with the, the parable of the wheat and the tares and this parable, it's not talking about wheat and tares inside of the church. So it's talking about wheat and tares inside of the world. Because in the, in the parable of the wheat and tares, the field is the world. So we say that Jesus is not warning about the church, what's going on in the church. Because if you think about it, at that time, Jesus had 12 disciples. So the church was them 12 people. Mm. So, so he's not warning about, oh, there's mixed. You know, he wasn't saying, hey, Judas is going to be mixed up among you guys. He, he was warned. There wasn't a church. They were all Jewish. There was a synagogue, oh. but he wasn't talking about the synagogue. So he's talking about the world. Mm. So the sea is the world. In this analogy, so in the parable of the dragnet, the sea is the world. So the net's going to be dragged on the whole world. So then the question is, okay, well, what is the net? Mm -hmm. So when you fish with a rod and bait, like I mentioned, you know what you're going to get. When you fish with a net, it's not discriminate. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 13, 47, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And so in the gathering is the word sunago. It means to gather together. Hmm. So similar to the word synagogue. This is where they gather together. So sunago, S-U-N-A-G-O, sort of. So it's to gather together, but it also means to welcome. It means to welcome as well. So in Matthew uh, 25, 35, Jesus said, For I was hungry... And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. So that word, invited me in, is sunago. 
So that's the same word. So sunag also means to invite in, to welcome. So it's saying the net, when they, the drag net invited people in, fish of every kind. So the, the, the drag net, the kingdom of God, the message of the kingdom of God is welcoming everybody. So it's not discriminant against people. It's not, it's, it's welcoming. It's inviting everyone in. Everybody can enter the kingdom and say it's welcoming all. So the, the message of the kingdom of God is the net. And the net is spread and it's just indiscriminately. It's picking up, you know, boots. It's picking up plastic bags. It's picking up whatever is in its path. So the, the message of the kingdom is thrown on everybody. It's thrown on the, the good seed, the soil. It's thrown on the side of, like, when the guy was sowing, he was throwing it on the road. He was throwing it in the storage. He was throwing it in the bushes. It's like, why is he throwing seed on the road? It's like, because mm -hmm. it's just spreading it everywhere. It's like whoever, you know, even though there was no chance of something going to grow on the road, he's like, he's still throwing the message yeah. out, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this guy's not going to ever convert, but give him the message anyway. So the, the, God, the word of God is the net. And, uh, and so they should have realized then that the kingdom was not just for the Jews, you know, from this parable, but they didn't get it yet because he's saying it's welcoming everybody. But they still at that time thought, okay, it's just for the Jews. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's welcome to everybody. And, uh, and so, so if we're f supposed to be fishers of men, then the net is the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Gospel of the kingdom of God, which is the whole salvation story of man ruling with God. So it's, or it's not just the salvation story. It doesn't stop at salvation. It's then after that, we're ruling with Jesus as well. So the, the gospel is the net. So man throws out a net of the gospel and is capturing all kind of fish, it's capturing everybody. So then the question is, what is the fish? What are the fish? You have Matthew four eighteen and nineteen. Okay. Okay, Matthew fourteen nineteen. All right. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Right, so I'll send you out fish for people or make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. So the fish yeah. are the people. Mm -hmm. So the gospel net is capturing people, it's capturing the souls of men, people. It includes the saved and the unsaved. It's, or the, the net is thrown out to them. So the net is capturing everybody who accepts the gospel, who used to accept the gospel. They're all in the net. And... Uh, and so they're, but then basically we see in the net, when they, just, when they bring the net out, they're one fish they're putting in a container, the other fish they're throwing back. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, but unfortunately at the end of this one, there's no throwing back. But there's only two type of fish. So there's not like, it's the, the, the good fish and the bad fish. There's not like the little, the little bit bad fish or the pretty good fish. Or the, or the, uh, the, the the good but smelly fish, or the the bad but <laughs> but but fast fish. Yeah. It's yeah. just the good fish, and the bad fish. There's only two fish, mm. good fish and bad fish. It's either you end up either in the container, or yeah. through or in the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. So then, obviously, That's the right. question is. Well, who's the good fish? <laughs> mm -hmm. fish. Okay. If there were a virus with the fish or something, you can understand how some, if they had the virus, they could look healthy, but they're bad because they have the virus. Mm. So it, they would be black and white, good fish, bad fish. Well, the, the angels know. Yeah, exactly. But that, that's a, that's something where this is a healthy fish. This one's got the virus, so it's easy to they look oh, the same. They look oh, the same, okay. but one's good, one's bad. Right. Well, it's about a little tiny microscopic virus. Yeah. yeah. But another yeah. So that's good. Yeah. And right, then, but you can't tell the difference by looking at them. One one fish has a little virus, so you can't eat it, but they look identical. One's okay. good, one's bad, but they look right. the same. Right. So what are you saying about that in, in regards to like what he was saying? 
that you can't really tell, even though they're they're in the net. He's saying you don't good and bad is a black and white thing, and yeah, if you detect the virus, that's a that's, that's bad. A, yeah. Period. Uh, even if the, the uh, beautiful looking fish, yeah, he's got, we detect the virus in the system, he's bad, can't eat it. Right. Just like a little sin that was never repented for. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we're, looking, <laughs> we're looking at purity. So I think exactly yeah. either it's, it's 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 good or it's bad. So I think yeah. When so when they're sorting, they're looking at also in those days if the virus was sent. Right, right. But they're looking at also where, you know, they're Jewish, so they have the Levitical laws, and the Levitical law says you can eat this, you can't eat that. You can eat this, you mm -hmm. can't eat that. So the virus was so it's also that if I eat this fish, is sin. Mm -hmm. So they have a specific, you know, you can't eat shellfish, you can't eat this, fish, you can't eat right. a type yeah. of, so it's a type of fish, and it's, it's this type of fish, and so it's not the behavior of the fish, it's the nature. Are you mixing analogies there, though? A little bit? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I went off the rails there. So. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's, not the, it's not the behavior of, yeah, this is a... This is a <laughs> On the flower he was. <laughs> so it's not the behavior of the fish; it's the it's the nature of the fish. The so the nature of the fish, and it's uh, but in the same, but in the sense that that's how it is with us. It's the those who have a sin nature yeah. will get thrown back, and those who don't will get won't be there. And in our sin nature, and it's in this yeah. Jesus that takes away our sin nature. You know, it's not based on how fast we swim or any of that. Jesus can kill the virus. Jesus, Jesus can kill the virus. And that's the only cure. And that's the only cure, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the only thing that can make us edible fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And kind of how you mentioned previously, unlike fish, that, you know, where it loses the analogy, fish can't change from one type to the other, but people could change from... One type to the other, so we but saw a sick like sick fish can get can get well. Yeah, yeah. And a sick human can get well. And a well a fish sinful can human, get sick. human can repent. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. And we also saw that in the parable of tares, that some people had to see it in their heart, but it got taken out by the cares of the world or the enemy. Mm -hmm. So it's like goes either way. Well, definitely a sick fish can get healed because that's we were all. Yeah. Sick fish. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. They got feed healed. So praise God that yes. sick fish can yeah. be healed. Yeah. 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 Thank you, God. So the so the bad fish are the are the bad soils in the parable of the soil. The bad fish are the tares in the parable of the wheat and tares. The bad fish are the leaven from the parable of the leaven. Yeah, I was just waiting for that. The, the bad <laughs> fish are the birds in the parable of the mustard seed. Yeah. Yeah. So in the parable of the soils, the bad fish are the ones who fell away, who were, who were good fish, but they fell away because of affliction and persecution. They fell away because of worries of the world. They fell away from not understanding the word. And so that's the one... You have to be cautious of. You got to study that. People, some people will fall away because they didn't understand it, and it could be because they were getting taught the wrong thing. And so that's why you got to study it yourself. You yeah, know, don't take okay. the pastor's word. Don't yeah. take my don't take yeah. my word yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah. No. Study, yeah. study it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and some people yeah. fell away because they were influenced by Satan. Hmm. So they got captured in the net, but they didn't make the final cut. They didn't make the final cut. The final cut. <laughs> yeah, was, they didn't. So it's not just some never so get in the net, and I some that get in the net get thrown back. Yeah, some never get in the net. Yeah, some never made it in the yeah. net. Yeah. yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Oh, I have a uh, a thought that he just said like they were doing their job and then they just followed him like they just oh the uh, disciples yeah like <laughs> they dropped what they were doing they literally dropped everything yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. came yeah. to follow him mm -hmm. and I was just like they didn't say bye they just, <laughs> yeah. they just it, like yeah. this makes it right. seem like they just like okay 
let's go. Like, yeah. That's crazy. Well, I think it was, um, so. He has power. <laughs> Jesus wasn't, so he had been preaching. He had started preaching. So I think the thing is that people had heard of Jesus by this time. Mm-hmm. So people had heard there's this guy sure. preaching, and some people are saying he's the Messiah. And the other people are like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he's sure. the Messiah. So like, there's rumors going around, and some people are like, I think the Messiah is here. And other people are like, no, I don't think it's so I heard, I heard he's just a carpenter or something. You know, I heard he's from Nazareth, really. Mm-hmm. And so there's like rumors going around, and some people are like, well, I want But everybody was kind of intrigued by him, even the... Uh, you know the the the, the Pharisees and the, and the, oh, yeah. they, they wanted to, you know they wanted to hear him until they heard what he said. Then they're like, okay, they're like, okay. Right. So everybody was intrigued and they wanted to know. So they they knew who he was. Yeah, and it's like the parable of the treasure and the hidden treasures. Like the guy <sighs> found it, or the or even the pearls. Like the guy was a. Uh, Searching for pearls, mm-hmm. then he found it, and he went and sold everything he had. So that's actually a prime example of that. They were searching for a pearl, apparently, mm-hmm. and then they, they found it. They're like, okay, this is it. This is the Messiah. So they yeah, like, gave up their livelihood. They threw their cast in net in the boat. And uh, two of them, I don't know if it was these two, were with their father, and they just left their father. So I guess apparently he didn't call the father. But Mm-mm. They just left. They just left, and... Yeah, a lot of few of them. The whole idea of obedience is lay down and follow me. Yeah, yeah. they hadn't they hadn't read the Bible though. They just I know, but they just, just had faith. Word. Yeah, they, they had faith. faith, and they were expecting the Messiah, and they were right. and uh, they were willing to give up all they had. Give up. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a picture of where we should be. Just mm-hmm. where I don't know. I can't say I'm there yet, but. That's where we want want to be. Right. Yeah. said than done, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you give up all your worldly priorities and lessons. One thing we should do that on earth. So, I'm yeah. gonna go right. push some, <laughs> right. some people. Yeah. Yeah. Not so attached. <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing, though, they were successful fishermen, were they? Oh, uh, you said uh, they worked. No, they worked. Oh, they worked. I thought you said, oh. Oh, they worked. Well, yeah, because um, <laughs> they were here. They I worked that day. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, that day they were. I mean, that was their job, so they right. they, yeah. they were said keeping Peter alive. Was a, was a, was a, yeah, top notch fisherman. Yeah, I guess Peter yeah. was. They were they were yeah. keeping alive by it, so I'm, we're not yeah. sure if they were rich or. You, you guys think it was constant, like uh, just uh, an accident that he stumbled upon these people, or do you think mm-hmm. God knew who they were mm-hmm. and they were destined? No. Yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, 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 destined for that. I think they were. Yeah. For that. So they might have been a little more yeah, open for it. Destined. You know? yeah, it is a good yeah. question. Though. I mean, they may have. Yeah. They may have felt like all their life that oh, I'm, that's all right. that's that's I'm destined for something. But God, yeah. God knew who they were yeah. before, and He oh, yeah. used to do twelve well, disciples. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It was happenstance. Yeah, yeah. Jesus wasn't that. I mean, he was. You know, he's saying he's a great salesman. You know, wow! Oh. I wish I could sell that way. Give me a check. Give me a Come on, me. Okay. Yeah, follow me. Right. Yeah, that's a heck of a sales. That's what I'm yeah. saying. He yeah. just only said three words, yeah. and they were like, "Okay, let's go." It's like. <laughs> Wow. I think God knew who they were. Yeah. Well, God definitely knew who they were. Yeah. But the, the question is, did they know who God was? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's to, true. He had to put Judas in that pack, too, to make everything work the yeah. right way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's some stuff, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, I th- yeah. So, I mean, we definitely have free will. But, I mean, I think some stuff is more... <clears throat> More guys seems than, miraculous. Than Something happened in a miraculous way. Seems that feels. I mean, seems that way. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was just thinking. Like, like, was it? Did they feel something? Like something came over them mm. to, uh, or like the Holy Spirit came over them? Maybe. Yeah, but but at that time. But they were probably born wasn't. destined for that. They just didn't know it. Born destined so. for that, oh, like John yeah. the Baptist was born destined for that. Yeah, yeah. but no, he knew it. Know. His right. disciples just they didn't know, know it. Know. Maybe. No, right. Yeah, you know. Or maybe they until, knew until until the right time. Maybe they knew it wasn't their time. Yeah, it, it wasn't time to tell them yet. Oh no! Yeah, they didn't. They yeah. didn't know. Yeah, what would they do if they knew it when they were ten years old? You know, they had to wait till they were 
what's at the right time. At that yeah. Time. Yeah, no well, circumstances. I think it's like Joseph. Like Joseph knew, exactly. okay, you're gonna be the ruler over king. So even though he knew, it's like you get sold into slavery. It's like you don't know when or how. Like you, just, you, just, you just go, you just go on. Yeah, they yeah. didn't know. Didn't know. They, they were no, just caught up in something. Just, yeah, and I, I feel like God had His finger on them, you know, mm. to, to make it happen. But yeah, um, yeah. Well, you were saying that the Holy Spirit wasn't around in that time. What yeah, I'm saying, yeah. What, Not what, yet. What, it was. What? Because, um, so the, it says the Holy Spirit. We weren't introduced to him. It, it says the Holy Spirit came upon David and never left. So the Holy Spirit would come upon you then. Oh, yeah. But it wouldn't dwell within uh, you. Right. But it says okay. it came upon David. Oh, yeah. And, he was, and then in, a, okay, in the story of the, uh, the gospel, not the gospel, the story of the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. It talks about a guy, Simeon, yeah. and it says the Holy Spirit was on him, yes. and it, God had told him that the Messiah is going to come in your lifetime. Yeah. And so yeah. when he went into the temple, he, he knew that that was the Messiah, yeah. and he blessed him. Yeah. So, yeah. so the Holy Spirit yeah. was on him. Yeah. 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 So there were some people, there, yeah. there were a few people that had mentioned the Holy Spirit That's were on. Uh -huh. and, uh, it so it came upon them. It right. wasn't. They were well, filled with it, yeah. Well, they, weren't, they weren't indwelled with it, mm -hmm. so it would go. It could go away. It would come upon and it, like most, Saul. Most Didn't people, it go on Saul? Oh yeah, yeah. It went on yeah, Saul and they came and off when that. he did yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was just thinking. So okay. So the bad fish. So we talked about the bad fish. All right. So a little bit more about the sorting. <clears throat> the sorting. In verse 1341, Matthew 1341, it says, The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness. Oh, this is in the um okay. so this is in the 1341. So this is in the parable. Oh, actually, so the reason I'm let me explain why I'm going back to this. <laughs> yeah. So oh, the uh, okay. I was like, what? I gotta change the order like right before yeah, right before like, I got here. But oh. so so we had we've been discussing in the parable of the uh, the wheat and the weeds. One verse that kind of tripped us up. It says that he removed the evil people out of the kingdom. So it's like, well, wait, they were in the kingdom. They were how did evil people? They were yeah, in the yeah, kingdom. The so which one are we missing? Matthew thirteen. 13. Oh, thirteen forty-one. Okay, thanks. Okay. I guess. So, so he, <laughs> he, removed, he removed them out of the kingdom. And so, so we've been saying, well, that the, the evil people could be in a kingdom. But then, so in this verse, when I saw in, um, in here, in Matthew 13, 49, it says, so it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out, come and take out the wicked from among the righteous. So it sounded like they were saying the same thing. The first one says it will take the evil from among the kingdom. And then this, the angels are going to come and take the evil from among the kingdom. And then here it says the angels are going to come and take the wicked from among the righteous. Yeah. But in this one it's clear that the wicked aren't righteous. The wicked are among the righteous. But they aren't the righteous. They're among yeah. them. They're among them. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. then I'm saying, well, let me go back and That's look. That's oxymoron. You can't be wicked and righteous. Right. right. Exactly. But it's the same. Right. It seems like an oxymoron. You can't be lawless and in the kingdom at the same time. But like yet, you can't be prejudiced and be a Christian at the same time. Right. right. But I mean, well, verse yeah. 1341 yeah. kind of we said, well, it's saying that the, the lawless are in the kingdom. They're yeah. taking them out of the yeah. kingdom. So that's kind of an oxymoron, too. Yeah. Yeah. If the kingdom is a reign of God and it's a... Yeah. And it's a state you reach where you submit it to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It seems like an oxymoron. So I said, well, let me go look at this a little further then if, because these are not matching up. And so what I saw is that um, it says gather them out of the kingdom. So that word is ek. It's a Greek word ek, uh -huh. E-K, which, which has a, a two-layered meaning. Uh, it means out, from, and to, which so the helps Bible study says, uh, which makes it outcome, it's outcome oriented, out of the depths of the source and extend into its impact on the object. So it means, it can mean bringing it out of the depths of the source, but it also talks about the impact that it has on the source. 
So move, removing the lawless out could mean that they know. So the wicked, same way here, now the wicked will no longer be able to have an impact on the righteous. The move, removing them mm -hmm. out could mean the lawless no longer have an impact on the kingdom. So it's not necessarily that they were in the kingdom, but they were the tares mixed with the wheat. So they have an impact on the kingdom. Like the when the yeast gets mixed in the church, they're going to have an impact mm -hmm. on the church. When the birds come nest in the church, false doctrine, we saw it's going to come into the church. So the kingdom of Satan has an impact on the kingdom of God. And it's mixed in, it's, it's among the kingdom of God, but the individuals aren't. In the kingdom of God. Okay, that, okay, I got that. They're not in it. They're not in it, but, but, they, they, but they have an influence. So it, it <coughs> also talks to the influence they have on it. Is it kind of like we're in it but not of it? You know, like we're in the world but not yeah, of it. Yeah, so, so it's kind of yeah. It's like, so, it's like so, yeah, they're they're right, in it but not of it because they're on the opposite, opposite. end. Uh, yeah. yeah, sort yeah. of, yeah. sort of. Oh, okay. They're in it, so it's it means they have. So the tears have an influence on the kingdom. And the, and the leaven, so it's the false doctrine and the, the hypocrisy and the pride have an influence on the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the false prophets have an influence on the kingdom. So they haven't necessarily entered yeah. into the kingdom themselves, yeah. mm -hmm. but they have an influence on the kingdom. And the mm -hmm. tears' roots were intermingled with the wheat. Right. Well, you couldn't take so you them, couldn't out, take them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they They have to be left in. in. So that means we leave the sinners in our church until judgment day or something. Yes. Can't yeah. purge them out early. Correct. Because we don't have judgment of God anyway. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. right. And we can't do it. <laughs> You're a sinner. We don't do it. Yeah. We can't do it. Although, although some churches do, they excommunicate. Yeah. Whatever you uh -huh. call it, yeah. they kick people out. Mm -hmm. They do especially. Go back to what right. you just said, though, about the the wheat. And the, oh, yeah, it's, and it's it's the roots. Dry. Yeah, right. the that's roots. why they couldn't tear. They wanted to tear the tears out early. They said, "No, if you do that, you'll kill the you'll wheat." Kill the right. Wheat. So it wasn't that the angels or the no the the uh, workers. So he told the workers, "Don't pull the the tears yeah. out." And so a lot of times you hear it taught, oh, it's because you can't distinguish them. But the workers were the but the workers were the ones that went to the owner and said, hey, there's yeah. there's weeds here, so they right. could distinguish they them. Could do it, yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't that well, they you could, could kill half they, the wheat. Yeah, right. if you took the tears out. Yeah. But they, if they took them out, they would harm it. Ah, so even yeah. if you can identify, so you could they could identify the wheat, but their roots were so the weeds were, and the wheat were growing up together. So their roots were intertwined. So if you pull the wheat out, yeah, you're then you got then the wheat. If you pull the wheat out, the, the wheat would come die. out too. It's going to die before, before maturity. But look how clever that is. How the that enemy, can happen. Yeah, and be so intertwined. Yeah, and so that's why it's saying it's going to take it from among the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're part of. It's not that they're wheat, but they're so mixed up in the wheat. Mm -hmm. That you have to, that only the angels can take them out from among the only wheat. Sir, exactly. So, so yeah. it's like the angels have to come and, and do the precision surgical right. removal of them. But if they're all so mature, like it doesn't people. have to be precision. Oh, if it's time to pull them out. Exactly. All, they all come out, out and yeah, separate. Yeah. If it's time to pull them out, then. Never, yeah, take, it said harvest and separate. Right, right. It said wait till the harvest. Yeah. Right. So I guess oh, you're so the harvest. So separate. at the harvest time, yeah, you're you going to pull do it. it. You're easier. pulling it. Well, is they're it all easier? Be, yeah. Well, no, you, you're pulling everything out anyway. Everything's coming out. Oh, it's time to pull it out. That's right. So I guess the weed is mature. You don't Weed over here, tears over here, burn the tears, and put the weed in storage. Right. So it's the same with the nets. Yeah, like once it's time to pull, once they pull it on C, mm -hmm. okay, now we can sort yeah, it now out. Now so we can sort it out. Okay, this is a good fish. This is a yeah. so you got good shrimp. fish. You got mature wheat and everything. This is, yeah. a, this is an old soup it. can. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a soup can. So well, the title of this message is "Don't be an old soup can." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, I don't want to yeah. be a suitcase. <laughs> that's my suitcase. <laughs> on judgment day, I don't want to be a suitcase. All right. Yeah. Preach that message one yeah. day. Don't be an old suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Like, what is that about? <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. I like that. Because I'm, like, I'm yeah. going to go just to see what this is All right. Old, 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 old shoe. Don't be an old shoe. Don't be an old shoe. <laughs> Sure. On harvest day with the dragnet, yeah. Oh no, I just I make it more a little more enticing. Don't be an old pair of Jordans. 
Yeah. The old pair of Jordans. They were cool. I'm going to go see, <laughs> so I'm gonna go see what, he, what that's about. <laughs> Everybody has to know what Jordans are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, I'd say don't be. A yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little old for that, by the way. So. Or uh, Chuck Taylors. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 all right, and then it also tells us that the the wicked <coughs> are going to always be among us until the end of time. Just like the tares. Mm-hmm. Just like the tares. Well, they are the other yeah, tares. Mm-hmm. But there's, so there's a, a teaching of the kingdom of God, a popular teaching that's growing that says that we as Christians, our job is to bring heaven to earth. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to bring heaven to earth. And yeah. so that's why... You know, we can do miracles now. We can do healing. It's like we have these signs, and we're supposed to convert the world. And our goal is to convert the world to Christianity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once we do that, then Jesus is going to come back. So that's kind of a, a lot of, even the Jews, some Jews believe that. But uh, it's big growing now in the Christian. It's called, like, there's something called the, it's dominionism is like the original word. But they also, it's something now called the seven mountain mandate. Talking about we're supposed to take over, you know, the political, the in, mm. I- entertainment, the different areas of the religious system, the different areas, and we're supposed to take it over. And yeah. once we convert it all to Christianity, it's like we're supposed to convert all those areas to Christianity. And then, and, uh, you know, with the end assumption being that once we convert it all, yeah. then Jesus will come back. But this shows us that, you know, the wicked are going to be there to the end. It's not our right. job yeah. to convert the world. And the tide is actually going in the other direction. You know, if you if you're taking numbers, yeah. keeping track. I was thinking that too. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. The Christians are still getting persecuted. And, well, and, well, and the numbers actually, are dropping actually, in places like this in the Bay Area. Well, in the Bay Area, so so the numbers are dropping, but they're not. Christians so if we if we're looking at America, the numbers are dropping. But if we look at the world, because I saw some number, it was like in, uh, it was less than 100 years ago in Africa, there were like, you know, some double digit million Christians, and mm-hmm. now there's 300 million. You know, the same type of growth well, in, so growth in China. Saying, same type of, we're, we're, yeah, where you went. Yeah, yeah. That was all, well, there's 98% Christian. Christian. Yeah, yeah, in Zambia. Yeah. You know, and the wow. same with China. China numbers are growing. Latin America numbers are growing at the same rate. So in, around the world, Christianity is growing dramatically. And then if you count Catholicism in there, then it's even bigger. So the Christianity is actually growing. Um... Which is interesting because we always hear that how it's shrinking is especially like we're here it's like three percent, three percent or something like that. But that that doesn't count Catholic either. I I found out. I doesn't. We talk about we're three percent Christian. It's like well that's not counting Catholic. It's like well wait a minute now that's (laughs) that's a whole different picture. (laughs) I like because wait the San Jose the Latin community there that's that should be. Large. Yeah, a pretty large. It's, it it's more it's than that's a bigger population than all of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Oh, easy. So, yeah. you know, we say three percent, but it's like three percent. What? What do you? You know? So I mean, I th- I, sometimes we kind of dr- use numbers to dramatize it. It's, but just uh, last week, I was reading or heard some about Christians being killed over in excuse me, oh, that's mm. Turkey or. Oh, the, oh, they're being, the yeah, they're being persecuted. So persecution is um, in the Middle East, in the yeah. Middle East, persecution is growing. In China, China people are still getting killed. Yeah. But they're, they're growing faster. But people, the persecution, I don't know if persecution is increasing. But, I mean, you got more of them. So, but, yeah, and it's getting more media attention now. News, social media and news uh, and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, um. Yeah, the Christians are definitely getting persecuted. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's more, but it's it's a lot. It's, uh, and uh, it seems, I mean, we weren't hearing about it before. 
I so, know. It's like they do need to focus on other stuff besides the political scene. Yeah. It's so that's world so that's thing. definitely happening. Persecution has started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the 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 parable here can be broken into two periods of time. There's the fishing and there's the sorting. So the, the fishing and the separation. So the separation is done by the angels. So we don't need to focus on that. Mm. So we just need to focus on the fishing. No, so you, you just no, you said you just said the fishing is done by. Oh, the separation is done by the angels. Right. Okay. Separation right. is done by the angels. Yeah. So we need to focus on the fishing. Oh, okay. So right now we're responsible for fishing. We're responsible for casting the net. So we qualified for that, actually. Yeah, that's the only part we're qualified for, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And if we look at Romans 10, and read 14, and then skip to 17, it says, How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? So it's saying, how will somebody call on the name of Jesus if they don't believe in Jesus. So right. they don't believe in Jesus, they're not going to call on the name of Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But then it says, how will they believe in him whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. So it's saying, how are they going to believe in Jesus mm -hmm. if they never heard of Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Right. The they never heard of Jesus, they can't believe in him. Mm -hmm. right. Then it says, and how will they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. So somebody needs to be out mm -hmm. there telling them. Mm -hmm. Then if we skip down to the famous verse, it says, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we realize what that verse really means is not saying by the reading the Bible. It's saying faith comes by hearing the word of Christ, hearing the gospel. Mm -hmm. So faith comes by hearing the gospel. So only by us speaking the gospel, telling the gospel, mm -hmm. spreading the gospel of the kingdom of God, will people come to Christ. So unless we tell the gospel of the kingdom of God, they won't hear it. Unless mm -hmm. they hear it, they won't believe it. We couldn't read it mm -hmm. until they invented the printing press. Well, but they, mm -hmm. they mem some people, they memorized parts of it. Well, well yeah, or, but you couldn't, you, you can't read it. I mean, because copies were so precious, handwritten mm -hmm. copies of the Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the yeah, printing right. presses would have made it able for right. the average right. man to read right. the Bible. Right. Right. And the, copies, uh, so. Yeah, yeah there was they just weren't they right. weren't enough to go around. So yeah. here, the gospel was the only way you could do it. Oh you know, yeah, because yeah. You, you couldn't afford a Bible. Yep. Well, also because the um, the Jews, even at this time when this was written, so the Jews believe they didn't write. They intentionally didn't write down like the Torah was never written. Like up until the time of Jesus, there was no written Torah. Oral, oral it was just an oral tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, it was, yeah. they weren't allowed to write it down, and they, right. they, so it was all just oral. So they hold. Mm -hmm. That's why it says, "Tell them the stories of Abraham. Tell them the story," yeah, because exactly. that was. Yeah. That's why they just repeated, and then they go into the again. temple, the synagogue, and okay. people. So and they didn't have radio and TV to, to, to distract them, so they had nothing but time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of so that, yeah. And so the, it wasn't until. When the Jews were getting um, captured and persecuted, sometime, I don't know, second century or second century or something, when they were, they thought they were going to, when the temple was destroyed, they thought they were going to be wiped out. When they said, "Okay, let's write, we better write this down, so mm -hmm. it doesn't disappear." Mm -hmm. So, I tell people, just get the gospel into you. The Bible says, "Hear the gospel." Nowhere in the Bible says, "Well, no." Jesus says, "Have you not read?" Yeah, yeah. So. But those are the people that are supposed to have Bibles, I guess. But mostly it's hear mm -hmm. the gospel. Well, the, yeah, and the Pharisees read. I they just say get it in you. Hear it, read it, whatever. Yeah. The most Never important count. thing is just get it in you, not how you get it in how you. How it happens. Yeah. Watch a video, radio, whatever. Just get it in, read it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, expose yourself in, into the Bible, to the gospel. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then expose it to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, we're supposed to be spreading the net. Yeah. Supposed to be spreading that. So some are gifted at that. Some have the gift of evangelism, and uh, others 
Not so much. We're supposed to struggle with it. <laughs> We're supposed to, yeah, to work at it. Have to work hard. <laughs> Our parents would always tell us, is if you get into the Word, and the Word will get into you. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of it is just, you know, if you're talking about your life, you know, you can tell somebody what happened, what experiences you went through, and God got you through. Just, you know, seeing you, how you react to circumstances, it's kind of the Bible. It's the Bible for some people. You know, they're like, why are you so calm when this happened? Why are you? Why didn't you respond this way when that person did yeah. this and that to you? You know, that's the Bible for some people. And they're like, okay, I want to know more about mm-hmm. this God you have, this that's Christian nice. thing. Yeah. Tell me more about this Christian yeah. thing, this yeah. Jesus thing. Yeah. And some seeds take a while to grow. There's a guy yeah. that I'm afraid to approach. I just keep saying, yeah, on Sunday after I get out of church, and wait, <laughs> wait for him to, you know, pick up on it. Uh-huh. He never, and he's, I'm too polite to go any further than that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he never, mm-hmm. he stayed, and nobody uh, has ever gotten past to talk to this gentleman about, about religion or anything, about mm-hmm. spirituality. And I try to open the door, but he doesn't step in, so I'm not, you know, you can, if you make it too obvious, it'll be... You yeah. Know. Well, after a while, he's gonna, I mean, he he may know. That he, <laughs> yeah, I know. Funny thing happens when you go to church Sunday. Resisting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Can't just can't figure him out. Very nice guy and everything, but just not real conversing and open. You mm-hmm. know, don't know anything. Married, single. We don't. Know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, but but everybody else we've talked about spirituality and you know openly. Okay. At, at, at a place I hang out at. Mm. Well, that's good. And he doesn't. He won't share it. He is. I don't know how to. I'm not that good at. Well, you know. Yeah. Funny thing happened to me on the way to church. That's all I can come up with. <laughs> when the last time? Oh, I prayed. Yeah, for you. Right, when yeah. the last time you read Matthew? Whatever you know. I don't know what to, how to open the door. So. Oh, yeah. so I had the yeah, same. So the same thing because I I mean I I teach the kids but then it's like adults are a little bit more difficult right Mm -hmm. so um, you know they have an app for everything but there's an app Mm -hmm. that actually it helps us to know like the next steps Mm -hmm. and like I was um, I put somebody's name in because it asks for the name it's like put their name in right Mm -hmm. then it says um, to pray for them Mm -hmm. and then also says to invite them to go to lunch Right, it makes it really basic, yeah. and it's called Mission Hub. And so you put the person's name in that you're trying to, you know, like the Lord has put you, you, you know, put mm-hmm. them in your heart, and it gives you basic steps, like just take them out to lunch. I learned to sell houses that way, but yeah, I, right, I right. hope this would be more organic. The, the, the spirit of it would be more well, organic. Yeah. I, but I know how I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. That's, it talks right. you through that. That's an oh, app. Oh yeah, that's it's an app. It's yeah. that's right. a structure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I can sell anybody a house. Mm-hmm. I know where to start and where to finish it at. So, mm. uh, but uh, mm. but Christianity, I'm not. I mean, just opening the conversation in a secular setting. Mm. It's, you don't see any parallel for, for some people. Some of the things that you do with the selling of a house. There's some. Got to be something. Is that really I don't know. I I think the sales techniques that you use. Some you know for that I did I wouldn't I I think it has this spirituality thing should be organic it should be yeah, just yeah. not contrived or because pe- a smart person can see I can see a sales pitch coming to me a yeah. mi- million miles yeah. away I, they ask me this yeah. question the next one I say I know the third question is going to be so because yeah. I used to do the same thing <laughs> yeah. yeah actually yeah they train in the out- I was in uh, network marketing, and they train you. They you have, some, they have yeah. something called form. It's ABC, like, always be close. Always be close. They had something <laughs> called form. It was like, you know, for people, because like some people say, oh, I'm not an introvert, extrovert. And it was like, well, no, we've got a formula. Mm. It doesn't matter if you are super scared of people. They were like, well, I don't even know how to start a conversation. Okay, well, form. Yeah. You know, first you ask them about family, <laughs> then User, occupation, name, recreation. Get them to say yes and, a wait, lot. Wait, wait, wait. It's a form, <laughs> family, <laughs> occupation, wow. recreation, and then message. Mm. And so the be- but the message was uh, Amway. But I've heard, 
I've heard people in Christian settings say, oh, you know, such and such pastor came up with this form, and, yeah. and there's a message uh, in the Bible. I'm like, that pastor didn't come I up with that. Up with <laughs> that. <laughs> that, that, that. That was wrong uh, for a year. Uh, <laughs> for Worldwide Dream Builders came up with that. That pastor, that pastor, that pastor that stole it. <laughs> All you got to do is keep the customer saying yes. Ask questions that you know the answer is going to be yes to, and then say their name a lot. And you're, all, you're halfway there. That's mm-hmm. right. Unless they see well, you when coming. people are resisting, it's Wouldn't like, you agree? It's like and a box say, yeah. of Kleenex. And it's keep it, now, if I put this over going. here, that would be wrong. Would you agree? Yes. And you just keep the yeses going. And well, the, the problem, <laughs> though, is that, like you said, when, if, when, they, when you know this, like, when you, when you, like when, as soon as it triggers, oh, this person is trying to sell me, then it's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the problem. That's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's okay like, if it's a house. <laughs> they, they forgive you. They say, oh, no, that's your job. But if you're a, a Christian, follower of Christ, yeah. you, you shouldn't be that, con- that yeah, no. premeditated yeah. and contrived. Yeah. Just be that's open. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, your share your heart. Yeah, share yeah, your, yeah heart. your testimony, that's true. You can yeah. Do yeah. That. If you tell them about you, what mm-hmm. happened to you, yeah. then no one can yeah. ever feel, yeah. this, right. is what, this is what uh-huh. it's like, this is what happened to me. It's like, I'm not saying anything what you should do. Or, right. you know, I'm this saying is, why I do, is, why yeah, I this follow, why me. I Yeah, yeah that, that is what I have been telling people. The, the things I used to call coincidences. Now my dad says, I've been praying for you every day, Chris. You know, that was maybe because of my prayers. That wasn't just a coincidence. Mm-hmm. When you run to somebody oh, over yeah. here or you mm-hmm. escape a close Absolutely. call accident or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. All right. So, there, so there's two parts of the parable. There's a time for fishing and there's a time for separation. So for the, for the separation, uh, in Matthew 13, 48, it said, and when it was filled, talking about the net, they drew it up on the beach, and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So that word gather is anabibazo. It's a mouthful. Oh. Anabibazo. So it's gather, so it's to, to make go up. So they make the net go up, and it's also to ascend. Okay. So it's to ascend, and so uh, a kind of picture we can paint with is also ascending. There's a point where we're going to ascend in the final resurrection. We're going to be gathered up in the net. Yeah. And we'll all be gathered in the net, drawn up, and we're going to all be sorted. Mm-hmm. And the sorters aren't going to ask us, did you swim fast or did you swim in the right stream? Mm-hmm. They just want to know what type of fish you are. <coughs> are you good to eat or are you unclean? So we were all born unclean fish, and Jesus is the only one that can clean us. You can't swim yourself clean. You can't eat the right worms to become clean. You can't swim up the right stream to become clean. Jesus is the only one that can clean your scales. If you believe in Christ, then you're among the good fish. So let's follow the way, let's seek the truth, and live, live the life of the kingdom. the resurrection of both the wicked and the good. So there's going to be a resurrection, but Paul says a resurrection of the wicked and the good. Because so they're going in a different direction. Acts, Acts 20, what was it, Acts 21? Acts 24, 24. 14 and 15. Oh, 14. Yeah, so that would be, if we, look, if we apply to here, then they'll both be resurrected and they're going to be sorted. One is going to the good container or eternal life. The other one is going to the fiery pit where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm-hmm. But we all get resurrected. Or well, I don't know if we all get resurrected. Yeah. but Because well, I guess we won't all die. Mm-hmm. I mean, we might, but everybody wants some money. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So do you have to be resurrected before you go to hell? Yeah, you have to be judged. Okay. You have to be judged first. And then you get sorted. You have to get sorted. And I guess you gotta you gotta be there. To, I guess they want to resurrect you. They want you to stand in front of the throne. And front and center. Stand in front of the yeah. throne and yes, you hear your sentences. You, know <laughs> yes, you. you gotta show up to court. <laughs> no excuses. Yeah, they not you can't. They're not gonna just send you straight from the grave down. It's like come on up.
go up and let him look at your rusty can. <laughs> yeah. I love my rusty can. Let me in. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an old her. shoe. He's like, so what is this? I got a can, yeah. of, an empty can and of he's trying to get in creamed mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All rusty and everything.